Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. <clears throat> We're starting the New Deal today, Chapter 15. And the first person we see here is FDR. And he will be very, very important um, for this entire chapter, as he is the person who really is uh, the one that introduces the New Deal, which is really what this chapter uh, is about. Um, and he also does um, lead us nearly through the entire um, World War II. So really widely considered one of the uh, uh, most influential presidents. And it wasn't all perfect. There are a couple incidents that um, maybe he could have done a little bit better job on. But the big, big important thing is that he took over in the midst of the Great Depression. And he did guide us nearly the entire way uh, to the end of World War II. He died just before, well, several months before it ended. The thing that Franklin Roosevelt is definitely uh, known primarily for uh, is certainly the New Deal. You can see here in 1932, you can see it says bread lines, <clears throat> homeless, banks closed. But if you re-elect Roosevelt, and this is for his 36, you know, but by the time it's New Deal 1940, you can see higher wages, you know, low rent, uh, Social Security. So this is to try to re-elect Roosevelt yet again, um, but this is really what he stood for. You know, like, look how bad it was in 1932. Look how much better things are uh, in 1940 after the New Deal has been in place for a while, so he deserves yet n another um, election. So what was the New Deal? Well, it was a bunch of economic, political, and social programs designed to ease the burden of the Great Depression. And people will argue, uh, did the New Deal, is that what fixed the Great Depression? Or was it the U.S. involvement in World War II? Or maybe it was a combination uh, of both. And some people say, well, look, you know, this is just natural economic cycles. Maybe it was neither. Maybe it just, you know, in economic cycles, things go boom and things go bust. And this was just the natural recovery. So even to this day, that is something that is still uh, somewhat widely uh, debated. Um, the Glass-Steagall Act, we're probably not going to get too much into this, um, but it has been recently uh, talked about in the last couple of years about um, you know, abolishing it. Uh, but at any rate, what it was, it, it prevented commercial banks from engaging in investment banking. So the reason why this was important is because a lot of people felt that investment banking was what led to the um, sort of on, or I should say, led to the start of the Great Depression. Um, and one of the keys was, well, if we prevent banks that are savings banks and things like that, that just, you know, are, are normal banks, if we prevent them from investing and uh, loaning money to investors, then at least if they, um, if the investment banks fail, people won't lose their entire savings. So, uh, it was a somewhat controversial law now, but back then it was sort of looked at as, as somewhat common sense. Federal Securities Act, and this, of course, you know, 1932 is when is when he takes play when uh, FDR uh, takes office, and so by 33 he's already got uh, Securities Act of 1933. So make sure you have accurate stock information. Uh, you know, you can't really make an educated decision uh, unless you have accurate information. Another one of the programs, perhaps one of the more famous ones, was the Agricultural Adjustment Act. And notice you're going to see a lot of things that are uh, what we call alphabet soup, because uh, there's so many programs that you tend to refer to them um, by, you know, their, uh, in this case, three, sometimes four, sometimes two, um, you know, their, I guess not acronym really, but the abbreviation. Um, this particularly uh, was a New Deal, again, this is a New Deal program. Um, designed to boost agricultural prices by reducing surplus. So we know that law of supply and demand says that if you have a whole bunch of supply uh, and demand stays normal, the price is going to go down. Well, in order to reduce the supply, the government bought livestock for slaughter and paid farmers not to plant on part of their land. And people were a little confused, saying, well, if people are going hungry, why are you having farmers not plant? They could plant, they could give it away. But again, this is a long-term solution. If we can get the supply relatively even with the demand, then the prices will go up naturally. And it ended up having you know, fairly decent uh, um, effect. The Civilian Conservation Corps, the, well, we don't have it, but it would be the CCC. Um, and this was a, a job 
creating sort of program. So it's a public work relief means that it creates jobs. And again, 1933, all the way to start of World War II there for the United States. Um, and in the United States for unemployed, unmarried men, originally for 18 to 25, and I think they um, boosted it uh, a little bit later, uh, up to I think 28 or so. But it was just giving people a job, <clears throat> you know, um, things, uh, uh, manual labor, you know, uh, forestry sort of stuff, building things like that. Um, and it gave people hope, gave them a chance. The National Industrial Recovery Act, the NIRA. Um, this was a law that the U.S. Congress passed to authorize the president to regulate industry for fair wages and prices that would stimulate economic recovery. Um, and so this really was a, hey, if people are struggling to make ends meet because they can't earn a living, uh, we should have them have, you know, require fair wages. Now, what is fair wages? Well, that's a whole other uh, a debate, but certainly it would be negotiated on. Deficit spending. Uh, one of the criticisms of the New Deal was that we are spending more uh, than we had, and of course that means borrowing. Uh, some people think it's a good idea because it can it can sort of uh, stimulate economic growth, and others think it's a bad idea just because uh, you just shouldn't spend money you don't have. And that is it for today. Thank you so much.